How does one start a profitable online business? Everybody wants to be online. Everyone wants to have a business, but there's a few things you need to do before you get on that path. All right, this is way better. <laughs> much, much, much better. Okay, this is the deal. You want to start an online business, but let's say maybe you're hustling or you're flipping stuff and you're calling at a business. Now, what's the difference between a hustle and a business? And the difference between a hustle, a business, a regular internet business, a lifestyle business, a venture business, there's a lot of different definitions. Now, I know they're going, I don't really care about that, Glendon. Give me the money. <laughs> That's all I care about. But see, part of knowing what you're doing is a big part of you ending up where you want to be. For, let's say, 2009 to recently, I had what was called an internet lifestyle business. I put out products, information products. I did um, webinars. And it was just me pretty much having fun. Then one day, I was like, hmm, we might need to take this up a little few notches. So I've created a business because I had a lifestyle business which made money when I was asleep, when I was like doing stuff, uh, running errands. It didn't really require me to be there, but it was only a limited amount of passive income because, you know, there's a lot of talk about passive income. And the thing is, passive income is very hard to get. You can probably do with the right systems, 60 to 100,000 a year passive income. However, it's not going to last that long. See, that's the thing. I had 100% passive income from making money with self storage and auctions and about two and a half years. And then it just went boom. Matter of fact, let me go get that book. I'll be right back. Or 2011 version of it. Check it out. Go ahead and read all the funny reviews on Amazon. Now, when I wrote this, I had no intention of creating a business. It was pretty much, I wanted to be a writer. I knew that people were having issues with storage auctions. And I was like, hey, I'll write this and then I'll get, quote, the real book deal. Now, this did better than a lot of my writer friends who had to go back to their jobs. But the whole deal is it started the lifestyle online business, which is what you see all over the place, uh, you know, be on the beach, the laptop lifestyle, that's really, really hard. Uh, for every person that is truly living the laptop lifestyle, you probably have 100,000 struggling. That's just reality. But that's just one version of an online business, which is very seductive. It's very, it calls to you. It's like, you know, like, I'm at home right now and pretty much I get up and I plan my day. But to start an online business, a real online business, which is one of the reasons you see a lot of changes if you've been here for a while, is it's got to be structured differently. So, you know, how do you, you know, and the reason I'm going and the long drawn out, this is how I started with this, this is how is how you start is how you will end. So if you're looking, if you want to build an online business, which say you start off as a lifestyle business, then you want to make that pivot because one of the reasons I changed the name of the channel is I need you to associate with the business more so than me. Because with me, it's very personal, but with hustlerskungfu.com, oh, that's just a business. Totally different relationship totally different animal. Now, as you're building your online business, you have to have the end in mind. That is very, very important. Do you want to sell it at some point? Do you want to give it to your kids? Do you, what do you want to do? How you want to end is how you should start your business. Because let's just say you're starting a business and you want to bring in investors. That is immediately not an LLC, but a traditional C Corp, that's immediately, if that's your plan and you want to sell shares, you got to go ahead and sell up a C Corp before. That's the first thing you have to do. See, 
Knowing how you want to end is very, very critical in you building your business. Now, over here, I think, since I'm back up here, you've got your, your definition. We're going to get into that just a little bit more because as you're defining your business, as you're putting it together, you, you have four categories. You have a traditional business that's using an online presence. Not necessarily an online business, but it's so you have a restaurant and you know they people are going to have to come to you or you're going to have to have delivery guys to take the food to the people right so online is just establishing a presence because you still have a physical location that's a different setup now what i have now is a completely 100 percent online business and i was kind of going over here doing all this other stuff and i said hey you're an online dude just really really own that so what i'm telling you is if you want to be 100 percent online once you make that determination and that definition, then that really pushes a lot of businesses off the plate. Going back to if you're going to have a restaurant, most people, unless they've been there before, they're not going to order some food offline unless it has a lot of really great views. I maybe in the future there will be restaurants that never have you never step foot in there. They're just strictly 100% online, but. That's a whole different thing. But going into your definition of how you're going to start your business online, you have to decide what you, what kind of business you want. I'll speak on myself. Hate traffic. Um, really, really hate working with crazy people. So this works for me. This might be miserable for someone else. Someone else being like, I don't want that. There is someone who may want to be on the stage. You, you want to give presentations and talk and you traveling every week is exciting and fun for you. Once again, build that into your business. Now, the big problem with many people is they don't know what to do. They know they want to have an Internet business. They know they want to leave a job. They know they want more money and they. Oh, OK, just just to put this in here since we're talking about this. When you start your business, this notion of you're going to have more time for your family is just bullshit. When you start your business, you're going to have less time for family. Just be really, really clear on that. You're not going to be able to start this part time business and get this full time income. I, I know you see it all over the Internet. There are people telling you that it's possible. I'm here to tell you, no, it's a unicorn. It's Bigfoot. It's the Loch Ness Monster. It's a Martian. You hear about it, but you never see it. So if that's one of your aims, I would say get you a part time job or reduce your income, because in the beginning, you're going to put in an incredible amount of time, effort and energy to start your business. So that's just let's just get that out the way before we go any further. All right. Now, another thing, as you are putting together your business, as you are putting all this stuff together, making your thing, owning it, you have to make some decisions. Remember what I said about if you knew that you were going to build a business, you needed investors, and you had to start a C-Corp. Well, that's not the only big decision you have to make, make that's going to run the gamut of your business. It, you know, do you like say, say you're a person who hates the cold, but you're going to start like a, uh, snow plowing business you know and you'll hear someone's like well you can start it and then remotely manage it yeah at some point you can but in the beginning it's going to be your ass freezing your nuts off in that snow plow because once again when you start the business you are the ceo you are the clerk you're the receptionist you are the call center your support you're everything you're everything you are running the whole operation and making those decisions. That's why when I say if you're young, 16, something, you want to start, do it now. Do it now. Because this is what most people do. And this is why it's so hard to start an online business. They go out and do all these life things. Uh, they, they get the car, they get the house, they get all this stuff. And then they have all these bills. And then the business, which is in the beginning, it's not probably going to spit out a lot of money. If anything, you might even be in the red for a few months. 
Now that's going to be going down, but your, your, your requirements, your burn rate, that's not going to change. You still got to pay the mortgage. You still got to pay that car note. You still got to pay those credit cards. You still have to pay that stuff. And now you're trying to build something that's going to consume a lot of your time and money or both maybe in some cases. So it becomes very, very stressful. So if you're 16, 18, 19, 20, start your business now while you have the plausible excuse of I'm living with my parents because I'm a kid. Work that. <laughs> work it, work it, work it. Uh, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an entrepreneur and I tried and I tried and I tried. I didn't have the support system that you guys have today. You guys support each other. I know a lot of your parents don't think you can do it, but you, you know, it's like, well, you know, John over there, he's got a domain name and he makes four grand a month and he bought his own car. And, and then you've got Julie over there. She's doing this. So you, you have this environment and you have these examples where you can go for it. So like I said, if you got an idea, go for it, make it happen. Don't listen to the adults because they're going to like, well, you need to wait till you grow up. Do you know if you start your business at the age of 16, by the time you're 26 years old, your business is 10 years old? Let's just say it only makes a few hundred dollars a month the first four years. Then once you, you mature and push it, and by the time you're 26, it's making 30, 40 grand a month. Do you understand how special that is, the opportunity? And that's one of the things you can do with an online business. That's one of the things that you can make happen. So... Let's talk about the other thing, because, you know, I'm giving you mental framework. Um, I know people want give me step by step, break it down examples, which would take, you know, 12 hours, maybe 20 hours. But, you know, there's some people who want that. And you got to look at the opportunity cost on that for me, seeing how I'm already sick. That just isn't going to go work out well. But I'm giving you the mental framework. Because you got to make a decision. You got to decide what kind of business you're going to start. Then you have to decide what level of commitment are you going to put to the business. Because this is probably the number one reason that many businesses don't make it. Lack of commitment. Not lack of customers. Not lack of cash. Lack of commitment. Lack of saying, this is what I'm going to do. This is my thing. I'm going to make it happen. And commitment's got to be huge because uh, up on the blog, blog hustlerskungfu.com, I talk about, you know, today, why give up? And I go through my reiterations because, see, my whole purpose, my singular purpose is freedom. So if I have this business and this business and this business that allows me to remain, remain free, I'm on purpose. And I'm doing what I want to do. I don't care what the vehicle looks like that gets me there, but as long as I'm in the freedom land... I'm happy. So you, you have to decide what's your singular purpose, what's your singular goal, and what type of business, which is important. Say you're a, you're a vegan, or why, why are you going to have a beef restaurant? You know, things like that. What you see people doing because they're, they're creating businesses for the money and it's conflicting with their inner goals and philosophy. It happens quite a bit. And then sometimes people crack up, but you got to have that huge commitment. Then the next thing you have to have is, I know this is uh, really crazy because I forgot about that, but hey, I'm back. <laughs> next thing you have to have is research. And this is something else that I do. I probably read or consume audiobooks two to three hours a day, four to five days a week. You have to continue to educate and research. Now, when I say research, let's just say, because th this is one of the reasons that people watch these videos. Let's say you're looking to start an online business. Typically, you're not looking to start an online business. You're looking to start a specific online business. That's hence the frustration, because you're looking for a specific source, like say, uh, give you an example. Uh, check out the guys who do the landscaping videos. They tell you how to do landscaping. They show you the equipment. They talk about their trials and tribulations of the business. And people love it because it's very, very focused. You want to be a landscaper? Watch the landscaping videos. Here, I tend to give you like the 50,000, uh, the 50, yeah, the 50,000 foot version, which is philosophy, the mentality, the structure, 
which is extremely important. But, you know, going back to when you're just starting, you're in that business, you not you don't know a lot. Uh, there's a lot to learn. You're not making any money. So it's really, really hard for you to muster up the commitment to push as hard as you can and you're not getting immediate results. So that's why, you know, number two, the commitment is so important because that's going to take you over those humps. But if you don't have that commitment, you'll start, you'll be good for a week or two, maybe six weeks, maybe six months. And then when you're not getting the results that you want, it's over. The fat lady is singing. Uh, it's all over. And that comes from a lack of research and that comes from a lack of results because once you do your research, and I'll give you an example. Uh, there's this podcast that I listen to. I'm not going to tell you. You have to find it because it's one of my you know, secret sources. And not a lot of people listen to this podcast, which is so crazy. But I was listening to it, and they put out four pieces of information. Four pieces. I know I got five fingers up, but they put out four pieces of information. I had to spend about three to four hours on each piece of information. All they did was just drop four pieces of information. Didn't, you know, just like, this is this, this is it. Boom, here you go. So I spent, you know, like I said, collectively 15, maybe 18 hours grooming that information, researching it. So we're almost at 20 hours, you know, when you include listening to the podcast. Did my research, put it together. And it worked out beautifully. Now, see, this this is why I'm not telling you because you'll go there and you will listen to it, but you won't listen to it with my ears. I'm of this opinion that if I buy a book, I listen to a podcast, I go to a webinar, I go to a seminar, and I get one to four really good concepts because I'm not greedy. If I get one concept... I'm good. It's worth the cost. Now, as we reflect this, because we're going back to the, the philosophy and the mentality of this whole thing. If you are looking for, I got to get results. You don't have time for all that. You don't have time for that research and the test. And no, no, you don't have time for that. So that's one of the reasons I'm not telling you what the resource is, because what's the, what's the saying? When the student is ready, the teacher will show up. Well, let's see if you're going to be ready, because. It's not about the information. It's what you do with it. Uh, there's some of you out there who have informationitis. You read every book. You consume every podcast. You know everybody that's doing it big on the internet. You follow everybody. You're spending more time reading, watching, podcasting than you are doing. Now, uh, let's see. Do I have it here? No, I just don't have anything. I'm not going to go get it. But whenever I listen to an audio book, this is the process because this is important in building your internet. I know you're like, I don't want to hear all that. Then this is the problem. You're so ready to get to the end point that you can't put the process in place to get you to the end point. But I'm going to tell it to you anyway. You listen to the book and you break it down. You listen to the first chapter and if there's something actionable, do it. You know, just do it on a small level. Then you continue to listen to the book because I, I listen and do, listen and do, listen and do. Then I go back over the book because there's stuff I missed. And I will go over the audio book three to five times. And each time I go through it, I will hear something new or I'll have a different take on it. Now, this is a huge investment in time. A short audio book is five to six hours. That's a short one. So five times, that's 30 hours. And I'm telling you this for a reason. As you do that and you invest and you start working and you, you start executing, your outcome is just going to be significantly better than if you just listen to it once and kind of sort of execute. It's just, and this is the thing is there are many out there who are you know, looking for information, who want to build these businesses, right? And... Part of the problem is your mentality isn't ready to absorb the information. I know it's like the first time you had sex, you were physically ready to engage in the act of sex. 
but once you developed some better perspective and maturity, the sex became way better later down the road because you had you you could process it, you could do it, but you weren't doing it as well as you could because you didn't have the experience level. See, you kept it clean. I know you were expecting me to say something all nasty, but no, no, not today. And that's what's happening with this information because. I'm giving you, like I put up a video, how to make a million dollars online. And, you know, I gave it to you. People were pissed off. They were like, it's like, it's not magic. It's not magic. I mean, it's not even close to magic. It's a system. It's a process. It's putting, it's research, it's execution, it's commitment. It's not magic. But once again, going back to where you are, and I've been there when you, you're in a position of lack and you, you need money and you got to make things happen. You, you know what, what Sweet Brown said? Who got time for that? People don't have time to learn the things that they need to learn to build the businesses they could build. So that's why I'm giving it to you like this. Uh, you, you've got to have that whole thing together. You got to figure out what kind of business you want. You got to have the commitment and you have to become a research ninja research check stuff out double check it out then the third the well the fourth thing is you know what i was talking about self-education i think self-education or personal development is one of the best things you could do for yourself i think it's hands down critical in your success as an online business owner because when you understand how their internet works when you understand how people work when you understand how this whole thing works you'll be just phenomenally more successful totally totally successful now some other things that you have to do and i'm, I'm going to give you an example of framework that i'm changing up when i created my course 30 days to 2500 dollars this is what I, now this this comes from research in my mind, I thought, hey, I'll put out this general business course that will help out a lot of people. Phenomenal course. And you know, you know what 30 days to uh, 2500 was modeled off of? This book. Except I really, really expanded it. Also, I'll tell you another story in just a second. But with the 30 days to 2500, the big problem is, what did I say in the beginning of the video? People are looking for something specific. Turn key, get this car started, and roll out. That's it. Not looking to learn. And see, the thing is, it's kind of sad because that's an immediate gratification thing because that stuff works, but any system that is that easy that you can literally push button it and start making money, it's not going to make money long term because it's so simple and they're going to sell it and more people are going to make it a lot of money. So it's just not going to work. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, take Amazon FBA. Like I said, a member of groups. I listen to stuff. A lot of stuff that was easy two years ago, mm -mm, you can't make money in those categories anymore because there were so many programs. There were so many people helping folks out. And the strong and the super successful will, you know, will always be successful because they'll figure it out. But for the average person who's just looking for push button you know, opportunities, they're going to be ass out because, see, this is the thing, and especially if you're older. If you do not know how to learn, if you get frustrated because you have to learn something new, you get frustrated because someone's bringing new concepts that hurt your brain, this new future is going to be very cruel to you. It's going to be very, very cruel. Extremely. So... Be open, but you know, back to the 30s, 2500. Now, what I'm going to do, and for the folks who join hustlerskungfu.com, they're going to love this. I'm going to take that course and I'm going to make it very specific for certain things, like 30 days to $2,500 with Craigslist, uh, 30 days to $2,500 with Instagram, 30 days, you know, that type of specificity, whatever. Uh, it, it won't come out because I'm all congested, but. Be very, very specific with 30 days to this, 30 days to the hustler's mindset. Those are going to be the new formats of the course, which will be modeled off of 30 days to 2500 fast start, which was really for physical products. 
So that's going to be the model and then we're going to get very specific instead of like say with the Craigslist course I'm going to give you the number one problem with Craigslist. Now Craigslist has the traffic. It's a marketing situation. If you're not doing well on Craigslist you're not marketing properly. Your pictures you either suck and copy eh, it doesn't really matter that much because people don't read ads. They just respond to the headline and the picture. That's pretty much it. So if your headline is tight and your picture is tight you can win on Craigslist. It's that easy. But that's going back to the new education. And I've you know, like this week I've listened to two audiobooks who've addressed how people come to certain decisions. And I was like, ah, that's why this process of self-education has to keep going. It has to keep going, player. You gotta keep doing it. You just can't like, okay, set it and forget it. Mm, that gets to be a little daunting. <laughs> it gets to be a little bit daunting. Now, here's the little story I was going to tell you. Now, this book in various iterations was $19.99 up to $99. And believe it or not, it actually sold at $99, which still blows my mind. I had a person who bought this book who was very dissatisfied. Very, very dissatisfied. Sent me an angry email, a hate gram, and was just so pissed off. I was like, here, have your money back. Keep the book. Have a nice life. And the reason I was so cavalier with that was the same day that I got that email, I cashed a check for $5,000 for a hands-on consulting session with someone based upon the principles of this book. Person was extremely happy. They had great return on investment and they bought other stuff later on. Now, what I'm telling you this is everyone that watches a video or a podcast and then people go leave these reviews, understand that's your review. I don't really leave negative reviews unless it is just over the top crazy stupid. It's got to be so obscene that it just requires that because I realize when I read a book, when I listen to a podcast or I use a service, that is my viewpoint, mine. And then I realized that most people are not like me. So when I'm putting that stuff out there, it becomes really, really interesting how some people take their viewpoint as if it's the gospel. Because like uh, what happens here on this channel sometimes, I have customers who love the channel, who bought products, and they'll in the comments put that, you know, I had this experience with the product, right? Haters will delete their comments or flag their comments. I mean, at one point it was so bad and that someone actually created a secondary channel and started answering comments as if they were me and harassing people who were leaving good comments. I'm not kidding. Do you take, you know how much energy that takes, how much time that takes, what kind of, lack mindset that you have to have that your precious life force is used for such fuckery oh it happened and they can't they came back and they came back and they created other channels until i got rid of all uh iterations of the fake channels now that kind of stuff can get you put in jail now you know back in the you know a few years ago it wasn't that bad but so many people are doing these things that people are going to jail or getting in a lot of trouble for this um it's just kind of crazy, but that just lets you know that when you are feeling pressed, when you're feeling under the gun, when you're feeling like you can't win, that people let that basic level rise up and they start doing this crazy stuff. Just crazy. Just totally, totally crazy. But that's the whole deal with the information. Information is only as good as the execution. Someone can give you awesome information, but if you execute... Like a turkey, you're going to get turkey results. Someone can give you okay information, but you execute like a ninja, you're going to get ninja results. I have seen this time and time again. And it's just so funny. But that is how you craft a profitable online business. You define your business. You commit to your business. You research your business. And you continue to self-educate yourself. Because going back to the definition of the business, there, there's like 
when someone says they have an eBay business or they have an Amazon business, I kind of look at them side eyed because I don't really know about that. But when someone says I have the store and then we sell some of our stuff on Amazon, I'm like, you got a business. See, this is the whole thing. When you say my business is yours, you could do what you want with it. You have your email list. You have your customers. You could do what you want. But if someone can push a button and say your account is suspended, you don't have a business player. You really don't. You're making money. You could be making a lot of money, but you don't have a business that you could sell or give. And that that's really should be your definition. Could you sell what you consider is your business? If you cannot sell it, it is not a business. Typically, there's exceptions, but the exceptions are not the rule. If you can't sell it, uh, you know, going back to what I was doing, my lifestyle business, I couldn't have sold that. I mean, really, it was a lifestyle hustle. I couldn't have sold it. There was no way because it was there was no processes. There was no systems. There is no way in hell I could have sold that uh, conundrum publishing. I could have maybe did some with that when it was super hot because it was an LLC. It, you know, it had all the business stuff. But reality is when you are the brand and that gets very, very. And that's another reason I changed the name, because like, let's just say I want to license something to someone. Have you ever heard the story of Famous Amos? Famous Amos Cookies? This man sold his name. And when the company went bankrupt, he could not use his legal name on any products or anything. He could not use his name anymore. True story. Google it. Google it. And I was just like, fuck that. <laughs> fuck that. So that's part of my education, part of my evolution with the business. And I'm just giving you these principles because the principles are very, very cool. And then for those who want more specifics, then I have paid products for that. So that's how that's going to work. And hopefully you got some benefits and tell me in the comments, do you have a business or do you have a hustle? Which is it? And if you have a business, why do you have a business? And if you have a hustle, why do you have a hustle? Let me know. And for those of you who are still here, this is something new that I'm doing as part of the business model. I'm doing training, taking my courses and you get on the email list, which would be an I around here. It'll pop out somewhere or you can go on that first link below the video. Just sign up for the email list. Be sure you confirm. And once a week, up to three times a week, I'm going to have a live webinar here on YouTube. I'm going to use the live streaming or the hangout. And I'm going to train you. You show up, you get the education. Now, if you want the recorded versions, I will, you'll have to buy that. And I'll make you a deal with, you know, for the folks who want that information. So that's how it's going to work. And that's the new thing. And then for those of you, and this is something else, I was not going to do any more consulting because the thing is I have Hustler Accountability partners, which I'm really vested in. That's a new group that I have on Facebook. I spent a lot of time there and I'm just dropping a great deal of information. So I had to get rid of all the consulting things. And this just, this is true story. I put that out and I know there were people who did not see the message, but all of a sudden I got flooded with these, you know, let's, I'll just say five. It was like five in a week. I consider that being flooded because consults usually come like one or two every week. You know, once, one or two every two weeks or something like that. Usually one to three a month. And all of a sudden I get five in one week and I'm like, what the hell? So once again, this is about business. Never ignore an opportunity that is walking in your lap. I mean, I got people asking us, like, okay, how do I handle this? So I created Hustler Compass Consulting because typically I have so many products, so many things that people are just like, what the hell do I start? So what I'm going to do is it's 250 bucks plus there's some more if you want that. And what I'm going to do is guide you, you know, like I'm your hustler guidance counselor on which way to go. And the 250 will go toward any product that you want to buy because or something. It's like, so you want this, then 250 is off the top. So that way you get the consult 
and you still get the product and it works like that. So it's just more a better way of doing this for some folks who are just like, I want to do this, but I need a little extra help. And it makes sense for me. It makes sense for you. So, oh, there's only four slots a week because, like I said, my big devotion and I'll tell you, uh, Hustlers Accountability Partners is 11 people in the group right now. And, you know, I set up for 40, but I knew in the beginning because, you know, storefront preaching, not too many people show up that I wanted this group to be different. I wanted people to have better outcomes. And I knew if I had a bunch of people that was just there to be there, it wasn't really going to work out. So that's the reason I was really, really specific. So that's going on and that's what's going on. But if you want to, the link could be around here somewhere and I'll just go ahead and yeah, the link will be below as well. I'll make sure I put that in the uh, description. But if that's something you want, understand, just four. Like I said, there's no calendar. First come, first serve. I'll try to get to you as fast as I can because, once again, I've cleaned up my calendar and I can do this now. So that's what's going on if you want to partake in that. And if you don't, once again, you can be sure to get with part of the train. Like I said, once, two, three times a week, I'm going to be doing that. All right, this is Glendon. I'll see you in the next session. People are not like me. So when I'm putting that stuff out there, it becomes really, really interesting how some people take their viewpoint as if it's gospel. Because like uh, what happens here on this channel sometimes? I have customers who love the channel, who bought products, and they'll in the comments put that, you know, I had this experience with the product, right? Haters will delete their comments or flag their comments. I mean, at one point, it was so bad and that someone actually created a secondary channel and started answering comments as if they were me and harassing people who were leaving good comments. I'm not kidding. Do you take you know how much energy that takes? How much time that takes? What kind of lack mindset that you have to have that your precious life force is used for such fuckery? Oh, it happened and they can't they came back and they came back and they created other channels until I got rid of all uh iterations of the fake channels. Now that kind of stuff can get you put in jail now. You know, back in the you know, a few years ago, it wasn't that bad, but so many people are doing these things that people are going to jail or getting in a lot of trouble for this. Um, it's just kind of crazy, but that just lets you know that when you are feeling pressed, when you're feeling under the gun, when you're feeling like you can't win, that people let that basic level rise up and they start doing this crazy stuff. Just crazy. Just totally, totally crazy. But... That's the whole deal with the information. Information is only as good as the execution. Someone can give you awesome information, but if you execute like a turkey, you're going to get turkey results. Someone can give you okay information, but you execute like a ninja, you're going to get ninja results. I have seen this time and time again, and it's just so funny. But that is how you craft a profitable online business. You define your business, you commit to your business, you research your business, and you continue to self-educate yourself. Because going back to the definition of the business, there, there's like, when someone says they have an eBay business or they have an Amazon business, I kind of look at them side-eyed because I don't really know about that. But when someone says... I have the store and then we sell some of our stuff on Amazon. I'm like, you got a business. See, this is the whole thing. When you say my business is yours, you could do what you want with it. You have your email list. You have your customers. You could do what you want. But if someone can push a button and say your account is suspended, you don't have a business player. You really don't. You making money. You could be making a lot of money, but you don't have a business that you could sell or give. And that that's really should be your definition. Could you sell what you consider is your business? If you cannot sell it, it is not a business. Typically, there's exceptions, but the exceptions are not the rule. If you can't sell it, 
Uh, you know, going back to what I was doing, my lifestyle business. I couldn't have sold that. I mean, really, it was a lifestyle hustle. I couldn't have sold it. There was no way because it was there was no processes. There was no systems. There is no way in hell I could have sold that. Uh, Conundrum Publishing, I could have maybe did some with that when it was super hot because it was an LLC. It, you know, it had all the business stuff. But reality is when you are the brand... And that gets very, very, and that's another reason I changed the name. Because, like, let's just say I wanted to license something to someone. Have you ever heard the story of Famous Amos? Famous Amos Cookies? This man sold his name. And when the company went bankrupt, he could not use his legal name on any products or anything. He could not use his name anymore. True story. Google it. Google it. And I was just like, fuck that. <laughs> Fuck that. So that's part of my education, part of my evolution with the business. And I'm just giving you these principles because the principles are very, very cool. And then for those who want more specifics, then I have paid products for that. So that's how that's going to work. And hopefully you got some benefits. And tell me in the comments, do you have a business or do you have a hustle? Which is it? And if you have a business, why do you have a business? And if you have a hustle, why do you have a hustle? Let me know. And for those of you who are still here, this is something new that I'm doing as part of the business model. I'm doing training, taking my courses and you get on the email list, which would be an eye around here. It'll pop out somewhere or you can go on that first link below the video. Just sign up for the email list. Be sure you confirm. And once a week, up to three times a week, I'm going to have a live webinar here on YouTube. I'm going to use the live streaming or the hangout. And I'm going to train you. You show up, you get the education. Now, if you want the recorded versions, I will, you'll have to buy that. And I'll make you a deal with, fan, you know, for the folks who want that information. So that's how it's going to work. And that's the new thing. And then for those of you, and this is something else. I was not going to do any more consulting because the thing is I have Hustler Accountability Partners, which I'm really vested in. That's a new group that I have on Facebook. I spent a lot of time there and I'm just dropping a great deal of information. So I had to get rid of all the consulting things. And this just this is true story. I put that out and I know there were people who did not see the message, but all of a sudden I got flooded with these, you know, let's I'll just say five. It was like five in a week. I consider that being flooded because consults usually come like one or two every week, you know, once, one or two every two weeks or something like that. Usually one to three a month. And all of a sudden I get five in one week and I'm like, what the hell? So once again, this is about business. Never ignore an opportunity that is walking in your lap. I mean, I got people asking us, like, okay, how do I handle this? So I created Hustler Compass Consulting because typically... I have so many products, so many things that people are just like, what the hell do I start? So what I'm going to do is it's 250 bucks plus there's some more if you want that. And what I'm going to do is guide you, you know, like I'm your hustler guidance counselor on which way to go. And the 250 will go toward any product that you want to buy because or something. It's like, so you want this, then 250 is off the top. So that way you get to consult. And you still get the product and it works like that. So it's just more a better way of doing this for some folks who are just like, I want to do this, but I need a little extra help. And it makes sense for me. It makes sense for you. So, oh, there's only four slots a week because, like I said, my big devotion and I'll tell you, uh, Hustlers Accountability Partners is 11 people in the group right now. And, you know, I set up for 40, but I knew in the beginning because, you know, storefront preaching, not too many people show up that I wanted this group to be different. I wanted people to have better outcomes. And I knew if I had a bunch of people that was just there to be there, it wasn't really going to work out. So that's the reason I was really, really specific. So that's going on and that's what's going on. But if you want to, the link could be around here somewhere and I'll just go ahead and yeah, the link will be below as well. I'll make sure I put that in the uh, description. But if that's something you want, understand, just four. Like I said, there's no calendar. First come, first serve. I'll try to get to you 
as fast as I can because once again, I've cleaned up my calendar and I can do this now. So that's what's going on if you want to partake in that. And if you don't, once again, you can be sure to get with part of the train. Like I said, once, two, three times a week, I'm going to be doing that. All right. This is Glendon. I'll see you in the next session.